and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday evening wherever you are. Today is Palm Sunday, and today is a very exciting show, ladies and gentlemen. We have two superstars in their respective field. Um, on the Sherrard Show to talk about the industry, talk about their mission and the things they have upcoming. I'm so excited to have them on our special Sunday conversation entitled Two Professionals, One Mission. I'm Sherrard and the Sherrard Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to listen to this broadcast, you can also listen to it on iHeartRadio. These are the best episodes of your life. We've had the Isley Brothers, Stevie Wonder, We've had from Mel Carter, you name it, have stopped by the Sherrard Show, as well as the Manhattans. But guess what? So is Tony Davis and Mandel Frazier. They will be on iHeartRadio, as well as Essence Television. So we're so excited about that. You can always add it to your smart device, Roku, as well as Amazon TV. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes down to uh, being in Hollywood, oftentimes you see names that are synonymous with great films. But then you have actors that just say, wait a minute, I remember him. I remember where I was when I saw this film. And one gentleman has, is currently in Tyler Perry's If Loving You Is Wrong. Remember that song, Loving You Is Wrong? I Don't Want to Be Right. He's on that. He also is on NCIS, as well as a big time. Um, he also is on Young and a Restless. And we're so excited to have him. First time in Chicago. He's a Midwestern boy who actually lived in Chicago as well. Mr. Mandel Frazier, welcome to the Sherrard Show. How are you, sir? Hey, what's up, Sherrod? What's up, Tony? I am happy to be here. Oh, <laughs> my oh my gosh. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Juwan Howard and the University of Michigan Wolverines for uh, advancing to the next level in the March Madness. Go Blue. You know, we support him 100%. And as you know, Sherrod, you know, Chicago Joe, boy. From Chicago. There we go. <laughs> there we go. And this is his second year as coach. Is that correct? Yes. He's a bad man. So congratulations, Juwan. Yes. Bring him yes. back to Gloria days in Michigan. Yes. And then we have a gentleman here. He is a filmmaker. Um, he is an executive producer. He actually is producing a film called I Forgive. You see trailers right there running on your screen as well. He's his first time on a Sherrard show. He has a down-home accent all the way from Mississippi, and he's here today. Mr. Tony Davis, how are you, sir? That's right, Woo! Mississippi in the house. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? We appreciate it. We love your background. It looks like you're in a Cineplex Odium Theater. We love all that with all of that. That's great. Hey, man, that 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 got to represent. All right, that's the. <laughs> now I'm going to kick it off to you. I'm going to kick it off to you first and foremost, Mandel. Um, now Mandel, tell us a little bit about your start. How did you get from where you are now? A lot of people see all the glory, but tell us tonight about your story. Well, long story short, I give you a synopsis um, of what my journey has been like, you know, I grew up in the church, you know, playing uh, in stage plays productions and skits and whatnot. My mother, you know, as a lot of people know, she, she was my first director and producer, writer. And so uh, long story short, she used to always get me involved in the church plays and whatnot. And, you know, I'm a Sagittarius, I'm the youngest. So yeah, I guess acting came naturally for me. <laughs> And so long story short, uh, you know, she's she's always having on the pulpit, you know, in between productions and I'm singing and playing the instruments and whatnot. So, uh, you know, I was just having fun. And I never thought about pursuing it as a career until I got much older. As a matter of fact, my major was computer information systems. So that's a far stretch from, uh, you know, doing theater. But what's funny is that on the weekends, you know, I would like, you know, have different friends of mine who was majoring in theater you know, with their productions and, you know, they would ask me to, you know, participate in, you know, different uh, things. It was projects they were working on. And um, so it wasn't until, like I said, uh, later in life, you know, I was, um, you know, I was working, I had good jobs, you know, great insurance plans and vacations, 401ks. And so at the end of the day, I wasn't fulfilled. I didn't feel like I was really pursuing my destiny in life. And so one day I asked God to, you know, open my eyes, you know, to give me uh, a passion for what I like outside of just living, you know, I want to be productive. I want to leave an impact, a legacy more or less. And so a uh, long story short, um, God heard my prayers and I'm a living witness. God would not only listen to your prayers, he hear your prayers. And Sorry. if you are, the Bible says, if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Amen. Right? Yeah. We have to have a, a sound heart, you know, a good heart, because God judges by our heart, not by our appearance, not by our accolades. He judges us by our heart. And so uh, I wanted to do something productive and positive in the community. And so long story short, uh, you know, I made the move to California and I prayed, I fasted. I, you know, I didn't let a lot of people know my dreams because I learned from Joseph. You can't tell everybody your dreams. Your dreams. No. <laughs> hey, Mandel, I need to tell you something, though. You're preaching this evening, but we normally don't pass the collection plate until 15 minutes into it. So you got to hold on to that, okay? And at least let, let uh, Tony got to say his thing before we get hey, the listen, plate going. Listen, Gerard, <laughs> cash app is... <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 what about you, Tony? I'm a humble man of God as well, but where did you or where were you when you, the bug that said, you know what, I want to produce films on a highest level like you're doing? How did that bug hit you? Man, man, you know, uh, my story came, as you know, I'm from Mississippi, right? So I ventured off from Mississippi and then, you know, came to Hollywood from Orlando, from, from way up Orlando, Florida, after three years there. And um, I had um, began to do r and I came from R&B singing, right? I, I mean, I had a deal with uh, A-Touch Plus, a group with Warner Brothers. And so I got sick of that lifestyle, man. So I, I after so many years of, 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 back in the 90s, late 90s, early 90s, actually, went from there to, um, uh, you know, start singing gospel. I just got tired of r and because it wasn't going anywhere. Like what Mandel said, I feel an empty void. So I wanted to just get out of that lifestyle, man. All those parties and all that crazy stuff that I was doing back then. Ah! So the brother had to get delivered. So I went to Atlanta and, and made a change, change dancing partners, as they say, and started dancing for Jesus, man. Then I, I jumped into doing my gospel albums. I did my first album in 1998, went on and on. In 2003, man, I had an incident. I was doing, I was working on a third, on my fourth album with a group called DDT, which is the France. You, 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 the France been on your show. Yeah. Um, the France and I was in this group that I put together called DDT. It stands for the France, David, and Tony. And we was, we was in the middle, middle of the album on the fourth, fifth song when I was attacked by some gang members, man. One day I was on my way to pick up my wife from work in LA, man. And I was attacked by some gang members. They shot me five times. Whoa. 10 holes, I died for 30 minutes. And um, I had an out-of-body experience and I saw heaven. From that experience, man, I wrote a book called Heaven is Real in 2005, I think it was. And, and I did a lot of stop the balance events with the mayors and things like that across the country. Now I'm gonna interrupt and, you for a second, Tony. I'm gonna interrupt you. So yeah. you are the man that DeFrance was telling me about who he's playing in I Forgive, is that correct? Well, he's one of the, the well, the actor <clears throat> that's playing me is called Munchie James, but actually DeFrance is like the, the mean boss that I had on my job, you know, the slick boss. He's playing that boss up on the, in the movie, yeah. <laughs> but as it stands, you died for 30 minutes and went to heaven, is that correct? That's correct. Yes, I did. Continue, continue yeah. on with your story. Yeah, and uh, I've shared my story many times, man, on, on Dr. Oz, TBN, any bio discovery. On, I mean, I've been sharing it for years. And all of a sudden, um, uh, I was approached by this man that saw me on TBN sharing my story. I was with Clifton Davis on TBN. And he reached out to me from Boston and said, man, I would just move. Because I was, man, I'm telling you, the Bible says speak those things as though they are, right? So I began to speak. I'm like, how do I do that, God? Speak it, speaking into the atmosphere. So I begin to speak that I'm going to be doing a movie on my story. It's going to come to pass, y'all. I don't know who God going to touch, but somebody going to help me do this film. And man, do you know that man called me two or three times? I finally went and asked the call because I thought it was a joke. And um, this man invested the money. We went forth and we did my film. Very true story, man. This man didn't know me from Adam and Eve, but except saw me share. And he said, I don't trust you, but I trust the God in you. I mercy, never forget mercy. Mercy. And he sent the money, okay? He sent the money overnight. And man, I, I began to branch out to do the film production. I brought together a great crew and we went forth and we did the film. Wow. Now, my question to you, Tony, is um, so living that life in 2003, what, ha what it ended when you got attacked by the gangbangers and you were legally pronounced dead, went to heaven and came back to life and you made a promise to God. What, what was it like? What happened when you uh, actually, what did you see? Well, um, again, I was delivered from R&B, man. I had stopped R&B like in 98 when I did, I just launched into gospel, went full gospel singing. And I was working on that, on that, on that fourth album with, with DDT. And um, 
again, I was on my way to pick up my wife, man. And out of nowhere, I didn't know that gang members, you know, we see this stuff on TV, right? But you never think it's going to happen to me. I mean, I'm, I never shot anybody. I've never been a gang. You know what I mean? I just not going to happen to me. Not Tony. You know, I'm a, I'm a singer. Not, I'm a lover singing, not, not a fighter or a shooter. But these gang members, man, in L.A., they was, they was initiating to join gangs. So they attacked me out of nowhere, man. And, you know, they shot up my, my Jeep and they came back and shot me. And anyway, when I was laying, I never forget when I was laying in my blood, man. I was laying there in my blood. And I heard Demas laughing at me. You've been serving that God. You came from R&B. You served. Look what that God let me do to you. And I thought about Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet still would I trust him. See, it's easy to trust God when that stuff is going great, right? But when hell come in your life, man, how do I get out of this? How do I get past this? And so when I had that, that last breath, man, and I went up towards these clouds, and they opened up through the clouds, I saw this huge, beautiful city, man. I felt mm -hmm. love. I never felt this kind of love before. I felt peace and joy. All of my cares, man. You know, you worry about your family, my mom, my wife. All of my cares went away from me, and I felt myself being consumed with pure love. And I felt like everybody's supposed to be a part of that love. I saw colors. I've never seen those colors on earth before. These beautiful, radiant colors. I saw these lights that these angel wings, these wings were going in and out of these lights as they floated through the city. And the Holy Spirit said that those are archangels. They never stop praising God. And then I heard a, I heard a voice spoke to me. See, when God speaks to us, he don't, people think he speaks to these ears, but God speaks to your spirit, your soul, you know, your spirit man, your, your spirit woman. And he said to me, it's not yet your time. Go back. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going back to that hell. I'm staying here. <laughs> because I'm telling you, brother, I felt like I don't care what color you are, what you look like. I felt like everybody's supposed to be in that place, man. Because you remember in the Bible, Jesus said, I'm going to prepare. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to prepare a place. Mm -hmm. And I felt like everybody, every human supposed to be there. And I want to say, but God said, I have a message that I need you to deliver to my people a message of forgiveness and triumph over tragedy. And I was fighting like, I don't want to go back. And I heard a blow. And that's when I began to go backwards and I opened up my eyes, man. I was on life support. See this cut right here. Mm. The doctor cut a piece of my vocal cord. They told me I wasn't going to be able to talk anymore. But you hear me talking and singing right now, brother, right? Wow. 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 That's a, that's wow. amazing. That is absolutely amazing. I'm so honored to, to, to hear this story that DeFrans is, uh, he's currently, he's currently on watching this now, as a matter of fact. Now, Mandel, uh, I'm going to kick it to you. We'll get right back to you, Tony. So Mandel, um, when you got into this industry, it apparently looks like Tony, um, his mission has changed to the fact that all he's all about is uplifting and helping people. Are you the same way, even though you cash some humongous checks from Hollywood, are you still humble to be able to just know that you got to reach out and help somebody who's, who's less fortunate? You know, um, I consider myself a humanitarian, uh, first and foremost. I believe in giving back. You know, as a matter of fact, a good friend of mine once preached, there's more power in giving than receiving. And actually the yeah. Bible says, it's more blessed to give than receive. That is right. So that every, you know, your gift is made for other people for the most part. So to answer your question, yes, I do believe I have an obligation to give back, not only to the community, but to the world by using our gifts you know, and our talents for God's glory, okay? Because at the end of the day, I do wanna hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Uh, but one thing I, mean, I do want to faithful for over a few things, come on up and be and be faithful to many boy. Absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my platform is faith, fitness, and focus. Mm -hmm. And that's based off my own life experiences for the most part. You know, uh, me, I'm a former personal trainer, and I used to be the fitness director for one of the largest uh, gym chains in the country. You know, my faith is in my upbringing for the most part. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. And of course, having focus. Living in Hollywood, there's so much hype. You know, there's so much Hollywood hype. And you can easily get caught up. I have friends of mine who moved here. When I moved here, they're not here no more, whether it's physically or, you know, in the terms of their... One thing about Hollywood, you can always, you can easily say your soul to the devil. And whether it's in... in it, it, the entertainment is so broad for the most part, whether it's acting, singing, dancing. Tony can tell you about that. And one thing Tony shared, said... Uh, he shared this story with me. As a matter of fact, I met Tony at uh, his first premiere of the movie. 
and uh, yeah. we, we became good friends. And uh, one time we were talking on the phone, and he went into more details. So, some things he couldn't, he didn't uh, put in the movie, but he told me personally. And I'm not going to share that. But one thing that really grabs my attention each time he tells the story is that when he said demons, he heard demons laughing at him, almost like mocking him, you know. And this is what we got to deal with as Christians, because when you out here and you're trying to make a difference, you know, I feel like God put people like me and Tony in Hollywood for such a time as this. OK. And so, you know, I feel my first obligation is to make sure that I don't embarrass the kingdom. I don't embarrass God. And so, you know, I'm not going to allow uh, things that um, I put it like this. I didn't come to Hollywood to compromise my integrity. I didn't come to Hollywood to, to embarrass my family, my friends, you know, my wife. So my whole point is, you know, I'm very selective in the roles I choose uh, because, simply because I don't want to uh, feel like I'm just here just to grab a check. Because as we know, you look at, you know, certain celebrities that committed suicide or contemplated suicide because of the fact that they have all the accolades, they have all the awards, they have all the clout, they have all this uh, entourage and whatnot but they don't have peace. And so my message is that peace comes with within. You can't buy peace. And so, yes, I, I come to Hollywood to pursue my dreams, my vision, you know, my purpose, but that's just not, that's, that's a part of me. That's not all of me. That's one of the gifts that God has given me, right? So I do believe that before this pandemic hit, I was always downtown and um, when, I, my, when my schedule allowed me to, I was on skid row, feeding and clothing the homeless you know, uh, making sure I do my due diligence for the most part. I don't do it for attention. I'm not getting paid to give my, the volunteer my time. This is something I'm doing from the bottom of my heart because I realize that, you know, when Jesus talks about, you know, did you feed me, you know, when I was hungry, when I was starving, when I was uh, wanted water, you know, when I, was, when I was in prison, you know, so this is how, this is how I care my life. It's not just a fad. This is a lifestyle for me. So yeah, that's the, probably the long version of, your, of my answer. That's beautiful, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. I hope those who are just tuning in know that we're having Sunday evening service on the Sherrard Show. These guys are <laughs> preaching um, in the truth, the gospel, in its unadulterated truth, and it needs to be that. There's no secret to it. It needs to be told. And you're talking about a man, both men, who've gone through things and have a testimony tonight. And we are taking your questions, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be taking your questions momentarily so you can ask these gentlemen what you like. And also, um, you, I'll, I'll get the scripture reading from them because they didn't quote the scripture that they're starting from tonight. Tony, what's the scripture you coming from tonight? <laughs> oh, my goodness, brother. You're going to throw me up in the air, huh? <laughs> man, I'm, I'm throwing from the scriptures of life, my brother. It's yeah. scriptures of life. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. sharing from experience, you know? Mm -hmm. There's so many biblical, uh, you know, that I love, so many biblical scriptures, but, you know, you know, uh, would you want me to just say a scripture tonight? Well, you, you, are, it's, it's funny, you were quoting Proverbs chapter three. Um, you were yes. quoting that yes. when you were saying God will give you the delights of your heart and desires. You were quoting Proverbs chapter three. But my question to you, though, Tony, is that um, what kind of advice would you give people like, Mand like Mandel was mentioning? You know, there's a statistic, people may not know this, but every month, 30,000 people move out here to LA with hopes and dreams, becoming a star, becoming, thinking that somebody's going to see them and they're going to become a movie star. But every month, 30,000 people get sent back home. This is a fact. <laughs> now, Tony was mentioning that, he was alluding to that, that he has a lot of friends that came out with him. Some aren't here physically, some aren't here financially or whatever. Some of them are still out here, but they strung out on drugs. And they never meant to do that. That was never their plan when they said, I'm coming from Mississippi or I'm coming from Iowa to be a superstar. What kind of advice would you give, Tony? Well, one thing, let me just say this real quickly about Mandel. What you hear from Mandel, that brother, what you hear from his, from his spirit right now is the way he really is. I mean, the ladies fall all, all over the brother, but he keeps it right there where he's talking about. I mean, he's real people. I, I give kudos for that, man. I mean, I've been behind the scenes with Mandel, you know, in green room and stuff like that. And the brother keeps it real. I appreciate people like Mandel. You know, let me just say that. You know, but let me just yeah. say this. I, I know that, you know, when I came out here, like I said, in, in the late, I really came out the late 80s, 90s, I got into R&B. And I'm telling you, I met so many people, man. I, I did the Soul Train thing. I danced on Soul Train with Candy. I did a lot of the things. I went to the Magic Johnson parties, Luther Van Dross. I did that stuff, you know. Did some background for Bobby Brown. I did some background for Nita Baker when I was doing R&B back in those times. But I noticed that a lot of folk, man, I kept my integrity, man. 
I mean, I may did a little few crazy, little drinking or smoking or, you know, uh, being, you know, with the women thing. But, you know, I, I kept the integrity of just who I am as a person. And I kept, I kept hearing my mom in my ear, Tony, stop singing that stuff and sing for the Lord. You know what I mean? So I had, I tried to be as, as best I could to be, you know, I didn't dog folks out. Let me just say it like that. I didn't just go and do crazy stuff. And I found that a lot of people that I met along the way, man, they was like living in their cars. They was homeless. I mean, they was had uh, tape around their boots to dance on Soul Train. I mean, I mean, it was like, what is going on? I always kept my little job going. I always kept my little car. And I just tried to do the things the right way. And I noticed that as, if you do right, my mom used to say, you do right, right will follow you, Tony. So I just encourage you that if, you, if you're pursuing this kind of career, keep your integrity. It's not about dogging folks out to get ahead. It's not about, you know, well, this is the only way I'm going to get past this, or this is the only way I'm going to make it if I take advantage of this person, if I dog this person out, or if I do crazy stuff. You know, if you, do, if you, if you choose that road, it's going to bring you those kinds of things. But if you just choose to look, I'm going to try to do the best I can to be the best person to try to hook. One thing I notice about people too is they don't, they scared to connect people with other things, with other gifts or, or, or other situations that they may have. Man, I'm telling you, the more you bring to your table to, to, to help and advance other folks, the blessings to come to you. So don't be closed handed, you know, and, and try to think that it's all about me and all about what I do. And that way things will go better for you. That's my advice. Very good, very good. Now, Tony, um, in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians, and we're going to talk about this, um, the Bible tells us that Paul had a thorn in his flesh. As a matter of fact, the story talks about how Paul, they don't know when this happened. They don't know when he, this was the conversion, when he was uh, went from Saul to Paul, or when he was in, the, um, when he was in, um, in Rome and he got attacked and, was, and they thought he was dead and they dragged him back in the city. But somewhere, just like you, he was caught up in the third heaven, the Bible says. And he heard yes. things he, 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 he can't explain. He said, no man should ever hear. He, and he saw things, et cetera. But because he saw those things, God gave him a thorn in his flesh. The Bible never tells you what it is. You can speculate, <laughs> but we know to keep him humble because his ticket had already been stamped to go to glory. God gave him a buffer, as they say, or a thorn in his flesh. My question to you, did the same thing happen to you? Did, you, did, you, did God give you a thorn in the flesh to keep you humble? from what you saw when you were in glory? Well, um, I wouldn't say he, he gave me a thorn, but he, he just, I, I'm so humble. You know, I've always been a humble guy anyway, but it just made me um, more thankful to have, because I know not many people have had that experience before. I, I meet people, I met people that said they went there and I see, can see that they did not go there. I've met people that faked it, you know? And, um, but I, <laughs> I, I just, I'm just being real. I met some like them, like, no, you haven't been there. But mm -hmm. I, then I met some folks that I could tell by the, their spirit, you know, by, by their, what they say that, yes, they did see glory. They did see heaven. But um, no, God didn't put a thorn for me. I'm just, you know, I stay a humble person, man. And I just, I love to see everybody blessed, man. I don't like to have, I got it and you don't. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm just that kind of person. So no, I don't have a thorn, but I just have a, uh, I just have a, a desire to just, you know, love on folk, man, and just wish and pray the best for them. I love to see people thriving, especially people of color, because as you know, I came from Mississippi. I came from segregation. I came from that stuff. And so for me to see life on a, in a different way and try to thrive a different way, it just gives me more hope to keep going. Amen. Amen. Uh, we really appreciate that. That man is uh, really preaching today. And don't worry, uh, fans. I know you're watching. We will pass your collection plate. Don't worry. We will. Uh, <laughs> pass, now, that, pass the bucket. Pass the bucket. Make sure it's a deep bucket. Okay. <laughs> now, now, for you, Mandel, um, being that, you've, that you're currently on If Loving You Is Wrong, you goes on NC, NCIS as well as Young and the Restless, people a lot of times like to pump your head up, pump your head up and make you forget who you are because they worship you as a celebrity, how have you been able to just keep yourself humble and just look at it as a job and nothing beyond that? Well, first of all, um, you know, if loving you is wrong is one of the projects I've worked on. Uh, but first and foremost, I wanted to give a shout out to my good friend, Dorian Edwards. Um, she's Dorian! She is like, and please keep her in your prayers, you know, lift her name up. She's been through some um, trying times, challenging times, but she's still here. 
And I told her the other day, if God is not, if you're not dead, God is not done. Yeah. So, you know, we go through right. our trials and tribulations in life. But to answer your question, Sherrod, um, again, I, I'm a firm believer, you know, like you said about Paul having the thorn in his side and different biblical scholars, they will uh, argue, debate uh, regarding what that thorn was. Well, my whole thing is this. He had a thorn. We don't know what that thorn was, right? We all have a thorn, um, whether we know it or not, for the most part. And so with me, uh, I think, you know, growing up, living in Detroit, Michigan, you know, I was young, athletic, you know, a little crazy, you know. Uh, you know, I had the spirit of David in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you know, just in, enjoying the, um, uh, how can I put this? Uh, <laughs> like Tony alluded to earlier. <laughs> You know, we, you know, you, 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 uh, you try to, uh, well, I feel like the woman, you know, you just, you know, you, you know, you just tell enjoy the truth, preach it, tell the truth. I mean, that's it. I, that's, I'm, I'm trying to be put it. The truth, the <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, that can, I mean, when the Bible talks about any other creatures, you know, that's what gets you. You know, it ain't that. that oh, it, it'll never stop. It'll never stop. You know, um, that I don't care who you are, and I'm sure. And I don't even need to know who you are as a man to know that women will always be the kryptonite for men. Exactly. Uh, but but, once but you get past that point, once you get past that point, once you mature and you ask God to change you, <laughs> and that change to come into, uh, I'm told about, I tell all the time. You know, God blessed me with certain att physical attributes, and I'm thankful and grateful. But now, but if God give it, like Job said, He can take it away. So I didn't want to. I didn't want God to humble me by being crippled, maimed. I've been in several. Oh, that's right. Minutes. You know, whereas I could have just, all of this right here could have been destroyed, okay? Uh, not so much the, the life, but the, what you know, as far as what goes with this life for the most part. So I feel like whatever God blessed me with, he is it's for his glory, right? And so I think at one point I was the prodigal son. I was out there doing my thing, having fun. But then God allowed me to go so far. And then he said, okay, son, it's time to wrap it up. So now, you know, whereas... Now that I'm in Hollywood, what I've been through in my life prior to coming to California prepared me for California, you know, and what I had to deal with outside of the industry. Because as you know, you know, Hollywood can be very, not just Hollywood, but life in general, you know, it can be very daunting, you know, and so you can get lost. You can, you know, uh, people, move, move, people move to Los Angeles, but then they become lost. So it becomes Los right, yeah. Angeles for the most part. And so, like I said, when I go to Skid Row, when I see people, you know, who are homeless and people who are living in the streets and eat out of the garbage cans, whatnot, that keeps me humble, okay? I pray with them. I talk to them, right? They share their stories with me. And I become very compassionate. I don't feel sorry for them because who am I to feel sorry for anybody? But I have compassion for them. I listen to them. I pray with them if they ask me to, for the most part, or within myself. But that's how I keep myself humble. That's how I keep myself motivated. And that's how I keep myself on a straight and narrow because I'm not trying to pretend to be something I'm not. I don't want to be a facade for the most part. So, you know, whatever Hollywood has to offer, yes, it may be work-related, but within that parameter, you know, I still have to make sure that I'm not compromising who I am as a Christian, you know? Right. And I know it's not popular nowadays to say that we believe in Jesus, but I'd say right now, Facebook Live, Essence TV, iHeartRadio, Mandel Frazier believes in Jesus, <laughs> Mandel Frazier believes in God, and guess what? That's right. I plan on making it to heaven so I can see what Tony saw. Amen, <laughs> amen. Preach it, preach it, boy. You better not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed. I know that's why right. on fire, you, okay? Amen. The Lord says, if you're ashamed of me and wrong men, I'm going to be ashamed of you in front of my father. Absolutely. In heaven. And, 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 um, but my only thing, though, Mandel, poking at you a bit, um, I thought your greatest Achilles heel or your greatest um, thorn in your flesh was being a Detroit Tigers fan. That's all I thought. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's all I thought. <laughs> Sherrod, <Sure, laughs> if you had said Detroit Pistons, mm -hmm. I would have gave you some slack, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but I, I actually, I did live in Chicago, you know. Uh, I would live, live in Chicago for a few years and um, so I became a big Chicago Bulls fan, uh, Blackhawks, you know, uh, so I kind of, I, I have dual citizenship in Chicago and Detroit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What about now, now for you, Tony, um, the thing is that you see a lot of things cause you're located in Atlanta as well, right? Uh, well, I've been there. Yeah. I've been, I lived there for years. I met my wife there actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. But now you're residing in Florida. 
Oh no, no, I'm right here. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Irvine. I'm in California. Orange okay, County. okay. So, so you're you're very well familiar with Skid Row as well, correct? Oh man, you know, I, I'm I'm an ordained pastor as well, you know, and I'm ordained. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I just I'm, I'm going for my doctor. I have my doctor. I'll be graduating about another month. I just finished the thesis and all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I man, I've been man, Lord Jesus, I've done I've done. As a matter of fact, me and the friends did a video called a song we wrote called "A Better Day." Uh, down there on Skid Row, and they came, man. They helped us out, man. Some of those brothers. I go down there and, and preach and minister for years. I did that. I did a lot of outreach. You know, I fed the homeless on, on the Saints of Value were ministries. You know, so I did a lot of lot of outreach. I, Mandel was is right on point, man. I, I've seen Mandel down there before. You know, Shaka Khan goes down there. You know, and so um, yeah, I, I, me and, and my group DDT. Yes, I've done a lot of outreach in Skid Row so many years and it breaks my heart even now like I was down there about a, a couple of weeks ago and I see the increase it's just heart-wrenching it's almost like a, a whole different world when you go there I have and it's like it's to me it's almost like a political thing that's really mm -hmm. keeping certain people in that type of poverty it's, it's very it's correct. sad that's a correct statement see um um, here it is, Mandel. You're from Chicago. Well, you you lived in Detroit and seen poverty at its worst, and then you've seen in Chicago um, Lower Wacker Drive. But going to Lower Wacker Drive in Chicago does not compare to what you will see at Skid Row. Skid Row is a whole city. It's a it's like a whole city for miles and miles where it has its own code, it has its own ethics and rules. It's tense and everything for miles. It takes a long time to walk through Skid Row to get to finally get to the train stop. It's a long road. And the fact is that these people did not plan to be on Skid Row. Some of them never had enough money to go home. Um, a lot of them, you know, they didn't want to go home because they didn't want to come back to be a failure. So they'd rather be homeless in LA and things like that. And like you were saying, Tony, many times it's, it seems political because there's billions and billions of dollars here in LA. Why can't we get them off the streets? What are your thoughts, Mandel? Well, first of all, let me correct you about Detroit. A misnomer about Detroit. Detroit has gotten a bad rap uh, over the last 20, 25 years. All of Detroit is not bad. You know, you have, there's some good parts of Detroit. You know, unfortunately, with the big three, the GM, you know, Chrysler, Ford, and GMC, uh, General Motors, they, um, uh, that, it's a, it's a, um, it's an automobile town you know, for the most part, outside of Motown. And so, unfortunately, it has, uh, it, it's, it's making a comeback, but uh, I don't want people to feel like Detroit is like Baghdad or Beirut, you know, for the most part. <laughs> I, I apologize for that. I apologize for that. Um, actually, Detroit is absolutely beautiful. Um, where the Pistons play, they play in Auburn Hills. Now, that's not in Detroit, but it's a suburb of Detroit, but Detroit is absolutely beautiful. Now, I've had a lot of people from Motown on the show recently. And the thing about Detroit is that Detroit was one of the most popular cities in America in the 60s and 70s when, when Motown was getting going. Everybody wanted to be in Gary, Indiana, and everybody wanted to be in Motown in the 60s and 70s. Is that correct? Well, I don't know about Gary, Indiana, but I do know Motown was the place to be in the 60s and 70s simply because, you know, you had, oh my gosh, Donna Ross, Donna Ross, you had uh, Michael Jackson, who had spent some time in Detroit for the most part. You had, and Tony, can, you know, contested that for the most part. I wasn't in the music industry, even though I grew up, you know, in a music musical family. You know, my brother, uh, my oldest brother, Zachary, um, he, uh, rest in peace, he uh, was the original drummer for George Clinton and P-Funk. You know, and he played for Shaka Khan. He played for all the major acts, you know, uh, during that time frame for the most part. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you look at Skid Row, 54 blocks of, 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 a, of, of a community that's, that's living in chaos and confusion, right? And so when I go there and I see nobody wants to be, I don't know anybody who grew up and said, I want to be a bum. I want to be homeless. I want to be, you know, starving. I want to be eaten out of garbage cans, right? But it happens. And it, it's various reasons why people are there, whether it's uh, runaways, teenage runaways, whether it's prostitution, like you say, whether it's people who could, they got caught up in the wrong side of the tracks in terms of drugs and alcohol, uh, they got uh, easily sled astray. If you don't have morals, ethics, values, and a strong spiritual foundation, you can easily get caught up, right? If you don't stand for something, you can fall for anything. And that's why you have to have some type of uh, 
to me, I feel like it's important to have uh, substance, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, when you go, uh, you know, walk out there and, and, and like, speak skit roll or anywhere for that matter, you know, like me and my wife the other day, we went hiking, you know, and so in the woods, you have people who are living homeless in the woods because some people don't want to be around, you know, skit row or on the beach for the most part. So it's uh, unfortunately California because of the weather and, you know, the ocean and you got so much going on here, people flock here, you know, whether they have a plan or don't have a plan. And unfortunately with the people who don't have a plan, uh, and sometimes even people with plans, you know, if you don't execute and if you don't obviously, you know, uh, stay focused on what you're trying to do and trying to accomplish, you can easily get caught up for the most part. So to, to answer right. your question, to see all this chaos and confusion going on, uh, and I'm so glad that we have a new administ administration, hopefully that will try to, uh, you know, uh, eradicate homelessness. You know, yes, I'm trying, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be political, but, you know, I'm being realistic. You know, I see every day what goes on. You know, I live in a nice area, but I'm starting to see the homeless spread out, even where I live at, you know, in the parks, you know, and of course, you know, the, by the beaches for the most part. So it's, it's a really a shame, but like I said, you know, no one, one person cannot fix the problem. We have to collectively do our part, right? Make, your, make a difference, you know, do your small part in this big world, you know? And I feel like if, uh, you, know, with, you know, with the pandemic, with the mass shootings, with all this stuff going on, you know, should I wear a face mask? Should I wear, not wear a face mask? Those are the, to me, it's all about common sense. But as you know, you know, common sense is not so common. So, you know, I try to keep it simple. I try to enjoy uh, what God has given me, which is my life. But I also wanted to try to help people who are less fortunate, people who are in need, people who are every day. I'm praying that God protect people who are living on the streets in America and beyond, that, that God give them the resources they need to better themselves, it's to strip their needs. And also that God expose uh, organizations and individuals who are deliberately taking advantage of the needy and less fortunate. Right. I'm an advocate right. for making sure that you know, people are treated right. Being a black man in America, I, I think I know a thing or two about being treated unfairly, but mm -hmm. I cannot use that as an excuse not to better myself. Mercy, mercy, Mandel, very good. I'm um, very good. Wherever you run for office, I, you got my vote. I guarantee you that. <laughs> this man is really speaking knowledge tonight that we need to hear. Um, I oftentimes, and, I, and I'm going to throw this to you in one sec, Tony, but you know, the problem that I have, and I preach this and teach this in my Bible classes on, on Thursdays as well as on Sundays, the thing is that many people know the truth, but they can be bought. So they won't tell the truth. They know something is wrong, but you pay me enough money, I'll look the other way. I believe I have two individuals on this show tonight that cannot be bought. One man actually went to glory and has come and come down to tell us about it. Now, Tony, my question to you is, and we'll take the question from the audience um, after this, is what is one thing you saw in heaven that can encourage us that, that, that blew your mind? Man, one thing that really blew my mind was all of my worries, all of my cares. I mean, I, I felt this joy, man, this unspeakable joy that came over me. I remember when I, man, sometimes I close my eyes and I just want to be there once again sometimes, you know, especially when I see the, the, the horrific thing that's happening right now in this, in this country. You know, it was, the last four years was horrible. You know, and last year was the worst. And, you know, when I close my eyes, you know, I remember when I went there, when I was standing before the gates, right? And I was trying to push my way inside, but God would not let me get inside that gate, man. I guess he knew because if I got my hand around one of those poles that I saw, I wouldn't let go. He wouldn't have sent me back to this ragged place, okay? I would have stayed there. But, man, I felt I felt like to my left side, I, I felt like joy. And to my right, I heard like a waterfall, like a stream of river coming down to the right. And down the middle, I felt this pure love. It's, it was like undoctrinated love, just love beyond what we could even, even imagine. It was just this pure love with no kind of hidden agenda, just I love you for who you are. And I and I felt this love, man, it was just tremendous to me. And, and, and like I said, I felt when, when God began to speak to me, he spoke to my spirit, man, you know? And, and I, it just, I was just amazed that, you know, even though I saw images of people, but I, I couldn't see no faces. I saw the glow of people. Even way off in there, I saw this, this huge pillow that was like going into these clouds, right? 
and, I, and the only, that's the only color I, I could say that I know it was like bone white. And I saw these like, like these this, this dark looking like lightning stripes going through this through different areas of these this huge you know like a pillow like this huge pole like thing that was holding up this building. It, it, it like went into the clouds, but it was so far up in there that I couldn't I couldn't get nowhere near there. But the people I heard people talking. I heard, I even heard some birds, man. I heard like birds and, and it was just the peace it was just beyond this world. I've never felt that much joy and peace before. Never in my life. Now, now, Tony, you were saying many people claim that they've gone there, but you can tell based upon what they say that they haven't gone there. What, um, to heaven, what do they usually say that gives it away that they did not go there? Well, it's something in my spirit, man. It's something, when you have that kind of experience, it's like you, you, there's a, there's a, a as they say, there, there's, there's a, um, Cold. you know, it's like, you can feel it. You, you'll know it's, 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 it's like iron shop and iron. It's like, um, uh, you know, you judge someone by the spirit, with what the word says, you know, mm -hmm. and I can feel like, oh my God, they went to heaven. Man, I'm telling you, I've seen eight, I've, since I've been, had that experience, I've seen 17 feet tall angels. You know, I've gone in rooms and I see a light blue cloud hovering in this room. And God said the Holy Spirit is about to do something in this room to these people. I mean, I've seen darkness. When my wife was on this, this is on video. I will show you the video. When my wife was on a ventilator for the second time, God gave me, gave me specific instructions to do to make not only she survive, but 15 people that was on that floor with her on ventilators, they survived too. They lost only one person. That's because he didn't bleed. It was, a, it was, it was just, just a bad spirit. And the doctor told me that. But I saw a black cloud over that hospital, man, right down where we live over here at the Kaiser. And God gave me specific, one night, one day, one I mean, one night, at, it, was, it was like five in the morning. These these sparrows came to my window. I'm like, why sparrows up? It was four in the morning. Why sparrows up at four in the morning? You know, and it was chirping. And God woke me up and began to speak to me. So I had to, he told me, go down there at seven. I want you to stand there and lift your hands towards the, the building. And I want you to pray for not only your wife, but everyone on that floor. And I'm telling you, a dark black cloud went away from that building. So I'm just saying, I've had those kinds. Of, I know it sounds crazy, like is he widow, is he, is he weird, but it's just the experiences that I've had since I've been back here, man. Some things I don't even share with folks because they'll say I'm crazy. I mean, one time I, I was, I was, I went to a funeral and James Ingram was in the room, right? And this guy said, "That's Tony." Da, da, da. And I went to James Ingram, and then James came to my house and we talked about my experience. And he showed, he was telling me some things that he had experienced, and he wanted me to validate some things, and I shared it with James Ingram. So I'm just saying, it's just some things that that you will know that you know, you know, it's kindred spirits is what I was looking for. You will know if that I've had some people to say. I've been to heaven and they begin to share things. I'm like, oh, no, that's not real. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, people think it's all about the streets of gold. It's more than, I saw a glow. I did see a, a gold, a, a yellow glow at the bottom, but I did not see the streets because I didn't go inside. But I did see a glow down there. But my mm -hmm. thing was the love, man, the joy, the peace beyond this place is what I long to go to again. Amen. Go now, ahead, I'm brother. Worried, man. Mercy, yeah. mercy. Um, you know, that's a wonderful. I hope I, I, I'm, I'm praying that you put this in a book or you plan to put this in a book because this is some amazing things. And nobody here on the Sherrard Show, at least on this panel, think you're crazy, Tony. We think you're speaking gospel fact. Isn't that right, Mandel? Absolutely. Absolutely. That is beautiful. Now, we're going to take some questions uh, from the audience. They are burning up to ask you a few questions. This question first is for you, Mandel. And this is from Leroy. This is from Leroy. He's already all the way in Massachusetts. He said, I've seen you um, on many programs. You do a wonderful job. Um, we appreciate your humility from both of you all. His question is, when you get down and out or low, what keeps your spirit up, even in the challenges of life? First of all, how you doing, Leroy? Thank you for the question. Um, what gets me down, and I'm going to be real and honest, uh, I'm not always on top of the mountains. Sometimes I'm in a valley. And so that's where my faith kicks in. The Bible says that he's given every man a measure of faith. And so it's not like one person has more faith than the other. We all have the same amount of faith. It's what you do with your faith. It's like the old saying, we all have 24 hours in a day. What are you doing with your 24 hours? So when I'm down, Leroy, and I'm feeling, uh, you know, depressed or oppressed or distressed, 
you know, uh, long story short, even when I don't feel like it, I get on my hands and knees and I pray and ask God. Uh, and sometimes I may not be on my hands and knees. I may just be within myself. Say, God, your word told me to cast all my cares and worries on you. Your word told me to be anxious for nothing. So I tell God and I remind him of what his word told me, you know, for the most part. Mm -hmm. I say, God, your word says, you know, that right. heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall last forever. Your word should not come back to you void. So at the end of the day, Leroy, when you're feeling um, down and out, talk to God and be real and honest. And that's going to build your intimate, personal relationship with him. It'll be genuine. It'll be authentic. It'll be original. It won't be a carbon copy. It's just you and God talking. Because prayer, I'm telling you, from my own experience, prayer works. So that's what I do. You know, I'm always, I give it to God. I don't have time to be stressed out because it's so much as a black man living in America, I have enough on my plate. So, and then you, and you throw in Hollywood, that's another, you know, that's compiled, that's right. you know, for the most part. So yeah, I, uh, Leroy, thank you for the question, but that's what I do. I just uh, pray and ask God to order my steps. And um, that way I'm not worried about things that uh, that's out of my control. Amen. Amen. Very good. I appreciate your question, uh, Leroy, and your answer, uh, Mandel. This question is from Demetria. This is from Demetria from Philly. This is from you, Tony. She has a two-part question. Her first question is, you just mentioned you saw some 17-feet angels. Is that correct? Yes, I've seen angels, 17-feet tall angels. Yes. Now, now, her question is, can you further explain what you saw and did they have wings? Yes, they did have wings. As a matter of fact, I saw an angel on a hill one day. I was going, I live close to the beach as well, you know, down the street there. And I, I went to Laguna Beach and um, there was a rock over there on the other side of where I was sitting down near the beach area. And I saw an angel standing there. And then God showed me a vision. I saw a vision where an angel had one feet over into the, the, uh, the, the water, right? And the other feet was on, on land. And, he, and the angel began to open up his wings and release a blessing throughout the earth. I don't know what God sent, but there was something came forth. It was a blessing for God's people. This happened about four years ago, five years ago, somewhere. And I was just blown away at what I saw. So yes, I've seen angels. I've seen angels without a wing. As a matter of fact, my garden angel, when I was shot and I was laying there bleeding to death, a lady came and I, and I shared this. I do have a book. My book is called Heaven is Real. You know, you can see it on Amazon. You can pick it up, whatever. But I, I wrote my book back in 2004. 2005. And my publicist, Dorian Edwards, Dorian is watching as well. Dorian has helped me along my way as well. Woo! Promoting things. Dorian, Dorian, I'm mentioning my sister name there. She's a beautiful but, um, lady. She's a beautiful, wonderful lady. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful man. I love Dorian. So anyway, um, yes, so I, my experience was there. The angel that came to me when I was shot and laying there bleeding, and um, the angel came and picked my head up and placed it in her lap. And she said, it's going to be all right. And she rubbed my head three times. And then she looked up and said, my God, what have they done? And this lady had a glow. You know, as a matter of fact, in my film, we had an angel there that had a glow. You'll see the glow on this angel. And she was, I can't say if she was black or white. She had a glow. So I don't know what color she was. All I know, her hair was black and gray. And I felt this love from her. Like, I know her, but I don't know her. You know how you feel something like, I know that person, but I don't know her. And she said, it's going to be all right. And the third time she rubbed my head, that's when I, I felt my, my soul left my body and I saw the body laying on the ground. So those are the types of angels experience that I had. Now, um, and we really appreciate your question, Demetria. I'm from Philly. Uh, thank you so much. Now, this question is from both of you all, for both of you all. Now, this is from Charles. This is from Charles. He is from West uh, Palm Beach, Florida as well. Wow, Florida's in the house. We'll kick it to both, but you can start off, Mandel. Her question is, um, what do you say about people who denounce and don't believe in God? Do you believe they truly don't believe him or they just have a problem with God? Now, follow me on this one. What is your question? What is your response to that, Mandel? And her name is Charlie. Yes. Hey, Charlie, how you doing? Nice to, thank you for the question. Um, one thing about me, I don't judge. The Bible said, judge not lest you be judged. So I... Who am I to judge anybody? I don't, I don't claim to have all the answers. I'm a believer. I'm not a, I don't claim to be a prophet in terms of, you know, uh, deciding, I can decipher uh, through, uh, like Tony said earlier, he talked about uh, spiritual, you know, you can judge a fruit by the spirit, judge a tree by the fruit it bears. 
but I'm not sure right. things in context. Um, I believe it's my obligation as a Christian to spread the gospel. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to believe because God has given us what they call, what we call free will. Come on, okay? preacher. And with that free will, you can do whatever you want to do. But guess what? There's consequences, you know, whatever you do. For the most part. So my thing is this, whether, you, I, I mean, again, my job, I told you earlier, I wanted to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So yeah. I don't want God to say, wait a minute, you had an opportunity to, to testify. You had an opportunity to witness and you did not do it. So mm -hmm. I told God, whatever platform he give me, you know, whether it's NBC, ABC, Fox News, you know, the Sherrod Show, Oprah Winfrey, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use my platform to give God the glory and also to do my part to share the good news. So uh, if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe, unfortunately, I have family members, you know, who straight away from the faith, you know, and not to put the body on blast, but it's not my, it's not my, all I can do is pray and ask God to show people who he really is. But if they don't want to believe, God's not going to make you believe, you know, for the most part. That's a personal choice we make. And like I said, God gives us free will. And that free will determines where we're going to spend eternity. So I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in, but I know who do. So I'm like this. I would rather believe in God and go to heaven and know there's a God than to not believe in God and to find out the hard way. That's how I look at it. Come on now, preacher. Come on now, boy. I tell you, man, I never thought I was going to have two preachers um, from the West Coast um, on the Sherrard Show tonight. It's so dynamite for that. Tony, what is your response or what is your uh, response to her question? Yeah, you know, um, life brings so much hurt and pain. Some folks get off focus. Some things happen that's unbelievable, man. And, you know, you can only trust, hmm, I would say, Let's say forgiveness, right? Some things happen that you just got to forgive. It's not a feeling, it's a choice. You're not going to feel like forgiving someone that has hurt you or whatever life situation has brought, you know? I had to, be, in order to get my healing in my throat, in my leg, because they was going to amputate my left leg at 12 o'clock midnight. And God spoke one word to me, forgive. And when I forgave, healing came into my leg and my leg came back to life. It was a miracle in that room. The doctors couldn't believe that my leg had came back to life. They couldn't believe that I was talking again because they wanted to have put a mark on the side of my throat, put a box there for me to speak out of. So I find a lot of people that I've met along the way, I've done some film scripts, some movie screenings in different cities, and I found people that was like atheists showed up, and they saw the film, and it blessed their lives. And some, one lady came up to me in Hollywood. As a matter of fact, that the one that, that, um, that Mendel was at, the one that we had at film school, the first uh, screening that I did, and man, this lady, she was an atheist. And she said, how can you forgive them? How can you forgive them? I said, because God forgave me. I'm not, a, I'm not a perfect person. And I may have did some mistakes. I've done some things, but I've learned to let go and let God. Whatever is hindering your walk or whatever is happening in your life, that does not define who you are as a person. You're beautiful. You're, you're greater than that. There's great things for your life. And if you just can just tap into that, walk into your purpose, walk into your, 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 your destiny, It'll be much more better than what you're feeling right now, because a lot of people are, it's, you know, they have mental issues going on right now. A lot of bad things happen. So they caught up in this whirlwind of why me? And it shouldn't happen that way. And why did it, it not happen to me? And then you look at other folks that are doing well, and then I'm not doing well. What about me? But you're not forgotten. God is still with you. You know, uh, favorites sometimes is not fair to some folks, but it will come. If you keep walking and believing and trusting, it will come to your household your life but you got to do the right things and like mandel said you got to believe you got to believe in something believe in god believe in yourself and let, let you know let yourself begin to expand and say okay god you're greater than this you're better than what i'm going through this is not about this is not of you i know this is of the enemy you know so i know that you i'm trusting that you're going to bring me out you're going to open up my doors you're going to make a way out of nowhere and if you believe and put your mind in that place man there will be nothing too impossible for god and that stuff will begin to break off of you, man. It's like change. You know, the devil does that. He want to put you in a place of lola bar. Like, why me? That, that desolate place. Of, of the, you know, it's, I'm sad. I'm not going to never make it. And why does it have to be? But you got to look beyond the pain. And you got to believe that God, you're greater than this. Because I had to believe beyond what those young gang members had did to me. You know, I had the audacity to go back over there two months after I got out of the hospital to forgive those guys. It shot me. I didn't know them. They didn't know me. I went back over there to, 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 to tell them, I forgive you. 
But you know what happened? All of those guys that had shot me was dead. God had allowed the enemy to come in and wipe those guys away because he knew their hearts. So God would fight your battle. God would take care of your enemies. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. I'm glorifying that because I wanted to witness to those guys. Mm -hmm. But God knows the heart of the enemy. And you would do better if you just trust God and just get beyond the pain. Just, just try to get on the other side of the pain. Mercy, mercy. Boy, these men are preaching. We really appreciate that. We really appreciate all you all's questions tonight. I wish we can get them all in, but um, Tony, where can they hit you up if they want to get uh, uh, ask you more questions about your experience or even watch the movie? Well, yeah, they can definitely go to my website. You know, um, it's, it's called iforgivethemovie.org and just put in your message, email me, text me, whatever. And I would be more than happy to just reach out to you. I, I get back with everybody. I don't care who you are. And I share stories. I, I mean, I've been doing it for years now. That's part of my destiny, my journey that God has me on. So go to the website. I have to give the, the, I have to give the, the I'm sorry, I have to give the movie.org or even pastortonydavis.cc, same website, and, and just put in your information and send it to me and I will get back with you. Look at your monitors, ladies and gentlemen, so you can know where to reach out to this gentleman for that. We are so honored to have him on the show today, uh, preaching a man who's actually living what he's what he's professing and been through the other side to tell us about it. As well as you, Mandel, what it, where can they reach out to you um, and be able to uh, keep in contact with what you have going on, as well as your impending book, I'm sure that'll be coming out in your life. Oh my gosh, you are, Shara, I love you, man. You you are, you are too funny. Listen, uh, I try to keep things simple. Uh, you can reach out to me. Um, I'm on uh, every social media platform, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, even LinkedIn, you know, TikTok, you have, what have you. Uh, Mandel Frazier, uh, that's M-A-N-D-E-L-L-F-R-A-Z-I-E-R, -L -L -E or you can Google me and you know, to go that route as well. Uh, but uh, that's the, you know, that's, um, I'm always trying to, you know, I, I, I'm the, I don't profess to be a pastor, but I, I do uh, think that a guy has given me uh, like a social media ministry, an unofficial social media ministry. So I try to uh, empower, enlighten, enhance, and encourage people, you know, through uh, my own individual experiences and to let people know that, hey, you're not alone. We're all going through, like Tony said, you know, we have to learn how to forgive. You know, I had to learn how to forgive because that's what keeps us bounded, you know, for the most part. And I want to say something real quick. I remember I'm always looking at different people's uh, social media uh, postings, if it's positive. And uh, my good friend, Bishop Dale C. Bronner, he po posted something that um, uh, he's out of Atlanta. And he said, uh, you can avoid reality, but you cannot avoid the consequences of avoiding reality. You know, a lot of times, you know, we say things, you know, I mean, we, we live in our own little world, our own little bubble, especially with the pandemic and whatnot. And I just want to encourage people that, you know, it's okay to uh, reach out. If you have gone through issues, you know, whether it's uh, emotional, spiritual, psychological, reach out to somebody, you know, whether it's through social media. I'm always asking God to bless me to be a blessing to somebody in whatever way that whether that's a prayer, whether that's through a phone call, a text, an email, you know, because you never know who you're blessing until they reach out and tell you. But our job is to plant seeds and let God water the rest. Very well said, gentlemen. Very well said. This is what we do here at the Sherrard Show, have fascinating individuals with life lessons and stories. We want to thank both of you all, Mr. Tony Davis, as well as Mandel Frazier for being on the Sherrard Show. Best to you all. At some point, we're going to have to do a follow-up on this episode because you two gentlemen ran out of time and we were just getting warmed up. Is that okay with you, Tony? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to that, man. You know. Uh, and what about you, Mandel? Detroit, are you, are you going to come back? You know what? You kind of dog my city, Detroit. So I want to think about that. <laughs> but listen, real quick though. Again, I want to congratulate my Michigan Wolverines. I believe they're going to take it all this year. Jawan Howard's going to lead the way. And uh, but yes, I would definitely come back because Sherrod, in all seriousness, I love your uh, your platform. I love what you're doing in the community. I love. Oh, I like that. I love the fact that you are uh, giving that platform for people to really speak the truth you know, and to encourage people for the most part. So I want to congratulate you and Tony uh, Tony Davis, my good friend, Tony Davis, and of course my girl, 
Uh, Dorian Edwards, that's my that's my big sister in Hollywood. Mercy. My big sister right, in Christ. Dorian, Dorian. <laughs> yeah. Mercy. And Tony, what is that? You're holding up I Forgive. You gotta, you gotta watch this. It's right on your monitor. Look at that. Um, this man has done some, is doing some great things. I love it. And I'm gonna watch mine tonight. And I'm gonna text Tony after it's over and tell him what I thought about it as well. Also, um, on our next episode of the Sherrard Show, again, um, is coming this week. Mr. David Allen Greer will be on the Sherrard Show as well as Tommy Davidson. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna get through it with all the laughs, but I gotta get through it, ladies and gentlemen. An hours of laughing on Essence Television as well as Facebook Live. So enjoy the rest of your evening, ladies and gentlemen. Be humble, keep God first, and we'll see you next episode. Bye bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at essencetelevisionnetworks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Dot com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.